All right, this is time lapse three. In this time lapse, I'm going to be working on this front leg. So my whole thing here is the fact that these forms don't allow a whole lot of range of movement for the character. So you know, I'll over exaggerate what I really kind of want to see, and then compromise in between. So I wanted this kind of huge shroud that went around and looked like an insect. And then what I wanted to do is also create something with movement. So right here, I'm working off an elbow. Working real close. If you don't work real close anymore, with the standard brush what will happen is it will fall off and that fall off will occur and squish up the form on the other side just like this so you know the days of being zoomed out with the standard brush are pretty much over I haven't found a, a workaround for it yet but it, it's alright actually it helps you you know kinda get in there for detail I think I'm going to change the feet totally around on this character and the fact that you know I want to have the feet more like a, a canine or I got this Great Dane that has these really really long feet and the feet arch down so I'm going to play upon that canine their heel structure is like way up on their leg this will add a new articulation point in the mesh too later on of course with all these new articulation points and new uh, kind of muscle think about how those things are working now you know that's kind of what's going on in my brain is like well technically this if this is going to be a foot I'm going to borrow some structure from a human to kind of give it some appeal you know I'm going to put like a heel in here and think about how that's going to look again working low levels and then working my way back up high okay then I realize I think right around in here that uh, the leg if it's going to move with this new articulation that somewhere in this area it's going to need something changed so I can have a more of a gap in this area that way when the character moves his foot up the whole mechanism folds in on itself in that area it's the same as if you look at the your arm and the soft tissue part on the other side of your elbow uh, where your bicep meets your forearm you know that that's built for the compression of those two muscles so I wanted something very over exaggerated in that area and on this mesh so something like that in the side view it's a perfect representation of what I want so I'm just gonna have to work out that in my front view now how it over exaggerates right here Now the luxury of creating your own characters is the fact that you get to state what muscles are. Um, now the downfall of that is the same thing. So 
The problem with developing muscles, one, you have to be able to explain what is going on with the character. Can it, if you look at it right away, can you can you see why a muscle would be there and not be there? So that's what I'm working on in my head right now. It's just the, you know, how how do all these forms move? And of course, I want to make it interesting. Just gonna speed it up once here, because this is just a lot of puffing out. This is the same thing I've been doing the whole entire time. I haven't changed anything. I've been using the standard brush, the move brush. Here I'm hiding that so I can get into it a little bit f further. And I'm just chunking this out. I'm just taking the standard brush and subtracting in areas. And kind of sketching what I want. And then taking the move brush and moving those out. And then squishing the forms together. What I just hate is like having a very straight thing, you know, just having the balloon animal look where it, it's just going from one form to the next. Of course, that's not how it works. You, know, you got to make some interesting forms in here to attach to each other. Where somebody's going to look at it and go, whoa, you know, I wonder, I wonder what, how, how does this character move? Uh, and then mix it up with scary and all that good stuff. So here you can see that instead of having this just flat tube, what I did is I arced it a little bit and then connected it back into the elbow of the creature here. I guess if you look at a chicken leg, it might be about the same thing. Yeah, it's starting to look more interesting looking. And that's what it is, you know, you want this thing where, you know, the whole character blends together. You don't want anything fighting the character. This is where I really kind of over exaggerate how a muscle attaches to another muscle. And this is where I use a different brush called the flatten brush. So once I over exaggerate it, what I'll do is counteract it with skin. If you think about how um, skin lays up against muscle, you're going to have to use something in your arsenal in the Z brush to kind of mimic that. And the flatten brush is amazing for that. So I guess the, the workflow is over exaggerate and then flatten. And the back of this looks a little screwed up, so you know, just taking the flatten brush here and flattening this out. Flattening that out. The topology in this area is all screwed up, so probably making it so I have to re-topologize later on anyway but right here you know I'm having a hard time with blending these two forms is because you know my polygon structure is all jacked here's where I I connect a lower to a bottom just just for aesthetics and you can see how all these muscles are just intertwining even though you know they what do they do? But uh, how how these blend or have this crease in here? This is that contrast value I was talking about. If you have these contrast values in here on your muscles, when you generate normal maps, it's going to have a, a lot better 
normal map generation because of these are laying next to each other rather than just standard brush and then having that popped up. I'm doing the same right here. What I'm doing is just moving and smoothing, moving and smoothing, and I'm, I'm blending these two forms together rather than having just one form just popped out. Um, the more your topology smooths out in an area of change like that, the better your map is going to turn out. So here I'm just taking the flatten brush here and uh, going over this form. So it over exaggerates it again. So there we go. We got all this these great little tiny weird changes and muscles and it's all interesting. Now in the foot, I'm going to do that in the next video. So I'm going to stop this and go into the next.